Welcome to part three, and I hope the final part. So, where what are we going to do? Well, we have to control the ailerons, so we're going to put our servos in. I'll put a little wood in there just to straighten it up, just for now. Um, I'm not going to glue these in just yet, and I highly advise you don't. Uh, these actually get glued in once they go through the fuselage because to get the wing through the fuselage you have to take all of this off right okay you get in the picture but we can do one half at least so that that part of the wing can go through and we can do all the bits and bobs without actually gluing anything in now what are we going to do well first thing you've got to do is get your servo horn which comes with the servo and there's the servo horn there you will get a little tiny screw I hope you can see that now it's very important you don't lose that screw because if you lose that screw well basically you're up a creek without a paddle but never mind so you put your control horn on okay then you get your other control horn the opposite end now these are wooden I like these because I like them and that's it that's all there is to it there's nothing particularly special about them normally they will come in a, a plastic pack which will look something similar to that and that's probably what you're going to use and these come minus the screws by the way which is why I like using these okay so where do we begin you line up your servo so the arm lines up with the mark on the aileron so you get a ruler and you get the servo straight and then you'll see that it lines up so to get the servo straight I'll take this bit of wood that I've taken off the lollipop stick stick it in there and that now lines up okay now you can glue this in now if you want but only do one wing okay so you mark up where the control horn is going to go now it's very important that this end here goes as close to that hinge as possible because that will give you maximum throw what we call throw don't put it back here you're wasting your time don't put it in the middle make sure that control horn is as close to that hinge as you can physically get it okay now we're going to support the aileron with this uh, screwdriver just so it lines up level and then what we do this end here is called a clevis you get your clevis this is a metal one i choose a metal one because i find it easy to use then you have a threaded rod. You can probably just see the thread on the end of that rod and this rotates in here, right? Put the thread, thread it through about halfway up the clevis, okay? The reason is, is that you have adjustment this way and you have adjustment that way without running out of adjustment. That's what the thread's for. It's not just to hold it on so you can adjust it. Next thing you do, now this is the tricky bit because these actually are a bit stiff but they're designed to be so they don't come out the control horn open up the clevis put it in one of the holes usually the top one there we go there we go so now that's attached okay see that's attached I put my screwdriver under there just to level things out level as I can that edge there now I get my sharpie pen I line up the hole best I can and I mark where that hole is on the rod there you go and I just doubly force that that's marked up properly the reason being I'm going to take this out again so you force 
the arms of the clevis apart and hopefully yes it comes out so that's where we want the bend to be we've got to bend that now you can bend it using pin nose pliers I have a proper tool for the job these cost I think about 12 pounds I line up the mark against the jaw clamp it and then I will make sure it's nice and level with my eye like so and I squeeze there you go and what we get is a nice Z bend now before I cut this I'm going to double check it Yeah, it's about the right place. So if it's slightly out, it doesn't matter because we have adjustment on this end here. So I'm going to grab pliers, slightly straighten that out. Grab my side cutters and cut off about to about 10 mil. Yeah. And making sure it doesn't fly off into your eye. So, we can now pop that through that hole there, so it looks like that. And then we can open up the clevis, and pop that in. Uh, it's always a bit fiddly. There you go. So what you have because I've not glued this in yet. So what you have is that. Can you see? I hope you can. Yeah. So now if I wish to, I can glue that in. Okay. I'm not going to glue the servo. But I can glue that. Now, let's see. Now, what we can do, we can also check the movement of the servo. You can buy one of these servo testers. It costs three pounds. I actually have two. The reason I have two is because I thought this one stopped working. <laughs> so I bought another one. And it turned out it was working again. So service test. Now, for as long as that doesn't pop out, you'll see this aileron moving. So, and I've not rehearsed this, by the way. So let's pop this in. I have a battery here. It's uh, 2,300 milliamp hour, 4.8 volts, Overlander battery, and it's a NICAD. It's a NICAD. So if you charge this up, make sure you put your charger onto NICAD and not LiPo, because you'll have a bad experience. Uh, it's just a normal servo plug lead there. Okay, you'll see on here that there's three connections there and one connection there. Well, obviously the one connection is for the battery. It does show a positive and a negative. And obviously red is positive, so we know which way round it goes on. And you'll see it light up. You plug the other end the servo lead into there with the metal part showing up okay just plug that in there you go and there's a little select button there which you go through little phases so here we go oh and that is pulled it apart <laughs> but at least your servo is working so what I'm going to do I'm going to glue that into there Okay, and then we'll see that working. Okay, so give me a minute. Okay, so I've glued this in. I put some sellotape over the uh, servo just to keep it in place. And I have done some adjustments to the clevis. And the horn there is upright. So I'm now going to plug this in. Okay, making sure I've got the polarity right. 
there you go now if I turn this knob here this is a manual setting you'll see that that will now move and that's how far you can take it you can see that there's quite a bit of movement there I just try and get the angle correct for you that is a lot of movement you won't need all that movement so I think we'll uh, gauge that as a success now when you have put this wing through the fuselage and you've got it in the right position and everything else then you can start thinking about gluing this servo in you can just use normal cyano normal super glue i wouldn't go gluing it so it'll never come out um, it will stay in place you just need to glue it good enough so a little bit down this side here maybe the top there and the top there don't go anywhere near that horn because you'll end up super gluing the horn and it won't move all right but before you super glue anything in make sure the final thing you do is put that little screw in there stops this horn coming out which does happen if you don't put the screw in okay and then this will just go in as normal and when you've got everything set up as you need it to do you then manually adjust this okay let's bring this back slightly there you go you manually adjust the clevis using the thread until that trailing edge lines up with that edge there and the same this side don't worry too much about the the wingtip side too much okay you've got your center of gravity marked out at 38 millimeters from the leading edge okay and when you're ready to do a test flight okay and if you've got a motor on this thing don't turn the motor on just hand throw it hand throw it observe what it does make it land adjust your clevises whether it's for the ailerons or the elevator throw it again and just make adjustments until you're happy that that little glider will go in a straight line without you having to really do much of anything okay and when you are happy with that then you can try your maiden flight we, we say a maiden flight it's the first flight so you put your throttle on and I advise you to put about half a throttle on and just hand launch it into wind and once it's flying and you're happy that it's flying then you can control the trim on your radio if you have to use excessive trim or you run out of trim on the radio land it and then manually adjust the clevises and then do another test flight obviously you've got to put your trim on the radio back to center but give it another test flight and then trim it out until such times as you haven't run out of trim okay now these throwing uh, test flights also include checking your center of gravity because obviously you might need to move it a little bit to the back or a little bit to the front okay but what you don't want you don't want a heavy tail you don't want the tail bringing the nose up if anything you want to be slightly slightly nose down okay because if it's slightly nose down you're penetrating the air and remember the airflow over the wing gives you control so if you're tail heavy you haven't got enough airflow going over the wing therefore you have less control so the more air or the faster the air goes over the wing the more control you have so you can't go too slow you know you can go slow with these but you, you know you don't want to be going too slow and stalling with the tail being heavy because if it stalls it'll just do that and if you're high enough it'll do that and then it'll do that and we call this porpoising like a like a dolphin and if your model is doing this it's because you're slightly too tail heavy so you need to put some weight 
into the front or move your battery forward in the nose to make the nose more heavy and then it'll naturally want to go down going down is good yeah going up is not so good you, you'll very rarely get a model that will just go in a straight line and it takes a lot of practice and adjusting to do that so just to re-emphasize um, just glue in place one side of the wing before you put it into the model because if you glue everything into the place and then you come to put this through the fuselage you're going to suddenly realize you've got to unglue everything because you can't get the wing through so just pick one side and secure it then it's that, that part's done but then put the wing in and then do the other side while the fuselage is on and if you make sure that you know everything's in the right place you can cut everything ready and then put everything on and then glue it but don't forget to put your little screw in before you put the servo in and glue it and don't forget don't glue the horn end because you're going to glue it and it won't move okay now I hope that's been instructive if you have some questions please send them I will do my best to answer them as quickly as I can and I really hope you enjoyed doing this and you'll see also that all those marks those pen marks I put on you're not going to see them now because all the gear is in place and all you'll see which this is in is where the center of gravity is so you now know where the center of gravity is when you put it in the fuselage okay so look enjoy your flying okay don't get disheartened if it, if it doesn't work first go keep at it it will fly and it will fly really really well i promise you um, all you've got to do is just have a little bit of patience and it will fly and it will fly great and you'll really enjoy it okay so happy flying and uh, give us a thumbs up okay thanks a lot for watching very much appreciate it okay baron flights bye bye that's all folks